This is a list of all 14 things I thought of when I sat down and thought, what do I wish I knew before I bought the car if I could go back and tell myself to give myself a heads up and kind of have a nice attack on the car when I first get it and know my way around it really, really well. I did as much research as I could before purchasing the Mark V Super, but there were some things I just didn't find out until I got the car and the first day I had it. Some things were overwhelming, some things were like kind of cool. I didn't find out until I talked to more experienced owners or found out myself. First thing that drove me crazy the first, I don't even know how long, week and a half until Marin showed me, the lane assist. The car naturally swerves, the lanes aren't perfect, you get towards the line, the car comes alive and swerves the wheel and like almost jerks it. Drove Justin and I insane. I'm clicking in the menu, I'm looking around, vehicle settings, I'm scrolling all crazy, I'm like, where is it? Ah! Marin showed me this whole time, this, is a physical button. I repeat, I can't believe it, but I for some reason thought only the traction control button was a button because it's indented. But this is a button. So you click it and then it pulls up this Toyota Super Safety. Then you can use the wheel, go to customize. You can go to customize settings, front collision warning. I turn it on late, lane departure warning off. This is what was on. If you want to let someone else drive your car, you can do it reduced and it's not that much. I like it all the way off and blind spot monitor, which is the orange lights on the mirrors. I put that on early. This was a huge win and I can't believe something so simple. I thought that wasn't a button, but it was. So I just don't want anyone else to drive around more than 20 seconds with that lane assist on. Just turn it off. I, it drives me absolutely insane. The cab and in here is so small compared to anything I'm used to and it completely threw me off. The windshield is like super short. Your visibility is crazy. You can't look over your shoulder in this car at all. So you have to fully rely on your mirrors. But when you get the mirrors where there's just barely a little bit of the hip showing and you use that blind spot monitor, your confidence should be high because it seems intimidating at first and I was very nervous the first day driving around, but once I got comfortable, I was like, wow, this car is so small. If it's in such small places, it goes faster than anyone on the road and the blind spot monitoring works so good. You can almost rely on that. And then you don't really have a blind spot with if you have the mirror set up right. I'm thinking back to myself in the first day and a half of driving it where I was a little nervous. I'm like, what were you thinking? Like, just relax, get the mirror set up, know that you can trust the blind spot monitor lights, know where they're at, the little triangles in the mirrors and just get used to the car slowly, but realize it's small. And if you need to move somewhere, make sure you're going faster than the traffic next to you and you should be all right moral of the story you have way more visibility than you think Relax. two things came to mind of what would be good for this car first was radar detector and second was a dash cam 70 my reached out and wanted to showcase their 4k dash cam let's install it hardwire kit that's purchased separately and this is a front and rear facing kit 4k in the front 1080 in the back here's the front facing dash cam itself rear facing one. The camera for the front does swivel. That's the display. This is the hardwire kit. So you gotta wire it to something that knows to turn on with the key. But since it has power, it'll be able to record when the vehicle's off. Peel back your sticker, electrostatic. Press it on so there's no air bubbles. And I put it as high up to get a great view. I have an SD card. Now I can angle the camera and we are already recording. 1080 or 4K, time lapse when parking or motion detection when parking, we can turn that on. Stops recording when you hit album, downloads it straight to your camera roll. What more could you ask for? GPS coordinates at the bottom of the screen, the speed we're traveling, date and time, everything you need for a dash cam. This has the first ever front and rear HDR camera set up, high dynamic range, so it's easier to see things in the shadows and in bright areas all at the same time, which is usually what cameras struggle with the most. Pair that with the night owl vision. This sensor is capable of really high image quality even at nighttime. As you can see, you can still see people's plates and information at night. It has smart parking guardian mode powered by AI. So if the car has an impact, it sets off the G-force detection and starts recording immediately. So if someone hit your car in a parking lot, or someone is walking too closely to your vehicle, the AI can sense that and start recording them immediately. If you wanna purchase one of these dash cams, I have it linked in the description to Amazon. Thank you 70 My for sponsoring this video so that we can further invest in the Supra and continue to make awesome videos with it. 
bring a USB-A to lightning cable for your iPhone or if you have an Android because my phone, I have an iPhone 13 mini, it's probably half the problem, but the wireless charger in here makes my phone so hot. And when the wireless CarPlay has a hot phone attached to it, physically hot, this thing, it just starts glitching and we were just driving home and the music couldn't even play smooth and Justin and I were about to lose our minds. How do we fix that? Bring a cable, plug it in the USB port up here. You slide the phone up in there and it will start charging it where it starts to actually turn into an oven. I'll plug the phone in and then this vent actually fits perfect if I point it up. <laughs> It'll sit there with the AC freezing cold. It will cool my phone down instantly and then Apple CarPlay starts to play smooth again and it starts to work. Is that an iPhone 13 mini thing only? I don't know, let me know in the comments, but it did happen to me and I was pissed because we were dealing with skipping and lagging music the whole way home after I bought this car. Because we didn't have a cable and the Apple CarPlay smokes your iPhone battery so much when it's wireless CarPlay. So I was constantly having to put it in the oven down there. It would get hot, music would skip, pull it out i didn't even know about the vent yet i was just holding it up with my hand just a couple annoying things that could have been avoided if i knew what i know now not as obvious as you would think but when you see this and you reach for it with your hand you can feel the seat adjustments to go back and tilt now there is the bolstering adjustment rocker here that makes this tighter on you and then the circle down there is your lumbar support so don't sleep on those and then if you hit set and then click the one you want it'll do a chime and you just saved your seating position so anytime you let someone drive the car other than you you can just click this button right here i found this out from chris that this is a bmw thing when you put the car in reverse this mirror over here dips down to show you curb view so you don't hit your wheel. There's some situations where I'm like, yo, I need to see behind me because this car has limited visibility and I'm looking around, I'm like, I really wish that mirror was good, but it's looking down and I don't like it. Well, you could fix that. If you come over here, the toggle switch for the left and right mirrors to adjust them, if you just click it to the right, it will deactivate that feature. So you can on the fly pick which mode you want at any time, which is super convenient. If you're having fun the first day driving this car and you see some fluid coming out the side of the car right here, don't panic. Right by the fender is where the washer fluid cap is. This opened up and water was coming out right here. If you're having fun with your friends right when you get the car, you can start the car in sport mode so it's louder, get some pops. Pretty aggressive startup, nice little subtle flex for the boys. So when you get in the car, the dash is lit up, it's on, press the sport button. You'll see the dash go to sport, sport here, start it up. I was thinking to myself, I don't like the auto start stop when your car shuts off with the light. I wish to start in sport mode every time. There's quite a few things you can do if you go check out the full video. I'll throw a little card on the screen right here. But if you get an OBD device like this, you can use Beamer code and do a bunch of cool things to the car. Coding, if you tell it that you have a Z4, you actually get more options. So this is fun to play with if you didn't know about it yet. And you can get a BMW M logo on startup on the screen with this. I don't know why, it's just like funny, nice like little detail to me. People get in and they see the M logo, they're like, what? Non-car people are like, isn't that BMW? Looking back, not realizing the actual extent of how tail happy this car is, is something that I wish I would have put more emphasis on. The traction control works really good, and I don't think it's anything you should be nervous about, but when you turn it all the way off, or even in sport traction mode, it will be just so tail happy, it will catch you off guard. I wasn't pushing it hard enough to potentially get in a bad situation, but we were getting close, and knowing what I know now, I'm like, wow, we were probably on the edge for some of that, and the traction control was definitely working and the stability keeping the stability in some of those corners at high speeds but i wonder what the limit is when traction control is on you just wonder how easy it is to loop out the car because when traction control is off it's very easy and that's the last thing you want to do when you get the car right so all i'm saying is the car gets insane grip but it's just as good at sliding as it is gripping so be careful learn the car trust it but also make 
make sure you know yourself where that limit and that line is before you find it on accident. To be safe, the only thing I can recommend is when you're going fast around corners and if you're on throttle at all, I would just keep the RPM a thousand lower than normal to keep good grip and not get too high in the revs to potentially, if you hit like a little bit of gravel on the road, then the wheels start spinning. If you're at a lower RPM, that's just like what I do to maintain more grip. I just bog the car a little bit. I like to drive any car higher in the RPMs because it's more fun, obviously, depending on the car. But when I'm learning, I usually just try to be like, okay, just force yourself, lower the RPMs down and just carry speed, learn the car. Don't try and drive it on the edge all the time. That's it. That's my mentality behind it. If you didn't know, if you click unlock and hold it, holding unlock, holding unlock, holding unlock all the way till they're all the way down, the keys can roll the window down holding lock and they go up and your mirrors go in. So if you want your mirrors to go in and your windows up, hold the lock. If you want them down, hold the unlock. Programming your garage code. These buttons are super low key and I owned the car for about two weeks. And then I realized, oh, I should probably program these, so don't sleep on that. Speaking of security, this is my first BMW, and if there's a red blinking light, that means your car is locked, and you can see the light further than your key will reach, so that is so, so, so useful. Love that BMW feature. Because I don't know about you, but I'm always like, oh, did I lock it? Uh, I think so. And then your girlfriend's like, you have to go back to the car for the third time. You didn't lock it. What are you doing? I'm like, can I see the light? We're good. This one's interesting. I'm going to go to my VIN number over here. The last six numbers. What's zero plus two plus two plus six plus six plus zero? 16. Remember that. El Secret Menu. Make sure the car is on, wait for all the lights to go away. Press and hold the trip meter. Long press, you're gonna see the miles go away. Don't panic, just keep holding it, they'll come back. Keep on holding. All right, long press, identification, nope. Press it again, system test, no. Chassis dyno mode, no. Test end, no. Unlock, click, press and hold that. All right, remember our number is 16, so I'm gonna press the button 16 times. Press and hold now. All right, we're gonna go to temperature now. Now I can see our coolant temp, oil temp, oxygen temp sensor. I believe that's what that is. Let me know if I'm wrong. But this is good for track days if you just wanna see how hot things are running. That is the secret menu. Every time you turn the car on and off, it'll go away so you gotta read it. The best for the last, how to do a burnout. Let's get it. Sport mode, check. Hold the trash control button until you see VSC off, really important. VSC off, put it in manual. I'm gonna do left foot brake about 70%, then give it gas. When this hits 4,000, I'm gonna shift a second. That was by far the most aggressive burnout I've done yet. I don't want to blow through these tires, but for the video's sake, so you know how to do a burnout, that's how you do it. It's really, really easy and satisfying with this car, and it's fun to do to make your buddies laugh when you're cruising around. That clip where I did a burnout at the light, there was smoke all through the intersection, and it's just making everybody laugh. If you thought that was it, it wasn't. The one bonus thing I want to say is that a downpipe in tune is absolutely, should be highly considered in your brain. I don't care how nervous you get. It does get a little confusing with the DME, which is the ECU, which is the computer that controls the car and which years can and can't be tuned. The Ecutech boot mode, uh, all these softwares and stuff. I'll have a video about that coming out soon, so hit that subscribe button to explain that all. So you have a complete peace of mind and you have everything you need to know when it comes to tuning. Marin is my neighbor who tunes on Ecutech here in Phoenix, Arizona, and he made this car extremely fast till it blows the tires off all the way through fourth gear with Michelin Pod Sports on.